We look after the veterans from all the wars and predominantly the numbers these days are still from World War II. So it's a very aged group, it's an advanced age group. And 80% over the age of 60. And the impact of, uh, of military service, both physical, mental, really impacts on the serving member, it impacts on the whole family. And it impacts on the way they think, the way they behave and, and indeed their health and it impacts for the rest of their lives. Veterans and war widows are in many ways in the aged care setting very similar to others. They have the same challenges, the same fears, the same illnesses. They're bringing with them all the physical problems that anyone else would have in the community associated with aged care. But they also have, also have a high prevalence of mental health problems. As veterans get older, and they're developing uh, dementia. Sometimes then some of the post-traumatic mental health issues come to the forefront. Some of these memories they've locked away for a long time keep flooding back and, and challenge the whole process for them and challenge the people who are looking after them. You find they're often not willing to come forward and seek help, that they haven't put their hand up because it's not the done thing. We are tough soldiers. We we don't have mental health problems. So I think this is very important and it goes right through the health sector. You know, to think that military service does impact on health, behaviour, well-being, the way people relate. And it's very often, it's important to ask them in the first instance, if they have served, is there something we should talk about? I think it's important for their well-being that the, the facility understands they are veterans with an emphasis on understanding what they've contributed. It's all about being seen as veterans and recognised as veterans. It's all about commemoration. On Anzac Day, they want to attend a service, even if it's in a wheelchair. They want all the events associated with the military to be commemorated. So when they go into a residential care facility, these are the things that need to be looked after. And you find many of them, when they go into a facility, in the first instance, You've got to break down the barriers and get them to, to communicate with the, with the staff, but also with one another. And that's not always that easy. Because in a sense, they feel very comfortable with other veterans, but they do feel different, I think, from the rest of the community. And of course, uh, service life is all about mateship. It's all about your mates. If you're a soldier on the front, your life depends on your mate as much as on yourself. So these bonds of mateship are very fundamental and very strong, and they last throughout life. So mateship is one of the key issues, and it goes right through, not just while they're in service, to when they leave the service. I was involved in a nursing home in Canberra. We found for those veterans and war widows going into this facility, many of them weren't communicating with the staff or others. We ran this program where we, we had a, the psychologist come in and say to them, would you like to talk about what you did in the war? It was quite amazing how most of them opened up. And the other interesting thing was, of course, they then started opening up, talking to the others in the facility and talking to the staff. In fact, it was almost like a catharsis that was so important to them, and so important to them fitting in the facility. It was quite a remarkable response. I think you need to use your judgment in all this clearly. But we found it is important to talk to them. You can talk to them about the, the war and their experiences, because they, they like to talk about it. So I think it's about educating the facilities that there might be something about this veteran. If they understand they are veterans and manage them in that way, they'll get a better outcome. And if you contact the local RSL or those organisations, they'd be very happy to talk to you about the needs of veterans. And of course, if you come and speak to us in the Department of Veterans Affairs, we also have loads of materials that can be provided for, for facilities or individuals to get a better understanding of the special needs of veterans. Thank you.